Hello and welcome to Cold Spring Harbor High School. Matt Schrodis, Tom Schnoes, John Perez with you as we get ready to start the Nassau County Division II Wrestling Championships. From Cold Spring Harbor as uh, we take a look at the team scores. Right now it's Seaford on top of the 209 team points. Locust Valley at 208. We start at 99 pounds. Jake Murphy from Seaford, the eighth grader, and Vito Rodriguez, the ninth grader for Locust Valley. And it is Rodriguez in the white singlet. Jake Murphy, the eighth grader, in the green singlet. Murphy, number one in the county in the last rankings. They came out, and it's Rodriguez getting the first points on a takedown. These two met last week, and it was Murphy winning 3-2 or earlier this year in a dual meet between the two. It's Coach uh, Rodriguez, Coach Joe Anea, the Locust Valley coach, saying this was a tough matchup for Rodriguez because he's such a long and lanky guy for a 99-pounder. Jake Murphy, a little bit smaller package, tougher to shoot in on. As Murphy on bottom right now, trying to free himself. Minute gone by in the opening period, gets his upper body free, but then Rodriguez reattacks his left leg, and they go out of bounds. They'll restart in referee's position. Murphy this season, 23 and seven, first place at Manhasset tournament. Valley Stream and the Nassau Qualifiers last week. And about 40 seconds remaining in the first, Rodriguez on top, 2-0 in the white singlet. Had the early takedown against Jake Murphy. Trying to ride that, set up the bar on the tight waist. Put some pressure on the head. Waiting seconds, 20 seconds remaining in that first period. Murphy trying to shake his leg free. Work toward, almost worked towards a sit-out position. He's really bottled up, though. Rodriguez re-attacking Murphy, trying to free himself. And we say as we were, so. Murphy will go back down with just two seconds remaining in the first period. Rodriguez will ride him out. And the first two minutes is gone with Vito Rodriguez for Lucas Valley on top two to nothing. Murphy deferred to the third period. Rodriguez took down to start the second. Works up to his base. Murphy riding a little high. He's got to be careful here. Able to break Rodriguez back down. Rodriguez turns, faces him, and has the escape point. Takes a 3-0 lead in this second period. That's what you want to do when you take down. You got to be aggressive off the whistle. Murphy, good, hard, aggressive takedown attempt, but runs out of real estate. And Jake Murphy from the Seaford side. Got to be aggressive, down 3-0 midway through this match. Rodriguez comes in a little wide on that takedown. Dra tries to drag Murphy by, but Murphy able to recollect. Two exchanges of glances. Good single leg in deep for Rodriguez. Trying to work on up Murphy. Trying to get his way out of bounds. And he does. So back to center with 108 to go in the second period. 3-0. Vito Rodriguez on top, but he take down to the first period and escape to start off the second period. Rodriguez a little uncontrolled as he tried to push Murphy, almost left himself vulnerable. Murphy comes to the near side leg, out of bounds, they go again. That 3-2 match that Jake Murphy won, Fedor Rodriguez tried to shrug Murphy up and ended up pulling Murphy down on top of him and that takedown ended up being the difference in the match. Murphy also football, lacrosse, baseball, undecided on the spring sport at the moment. Out of bounds they go with 26 seconds left in the second.
head-to-head, -head, just battle for wrist control and hand control at the moment. Murphy goes heavy on the head. Out of bounds. Waiting seconds of the second period. And time will elapse. And so far, Vito Rodriguez shutting out the eighth grader, Jake Murphy. And it's Murphy starting on bottom of the third. And this is where, for him, he's got to get out, got to get up quickly. Has his head free as Rodriguez tried to go for an overhead cradle. Rodriguez coming up high, out of bounds they go, and they stay in referees. Dave and Rob Taxeris, the Seaford coaching staff, looking on from the left side corner. Joe Anea for Locust Valley, the head coach in the right side corner to the far portion of your screen. And Murphy is completely broken down now, and the longer Rodriguez can stay on top as he gives a look up towards his coaches, the more that benefits him with the three nothing lead, the more time he can use with Murphy broken down, the more to his advantage that is. And a stall warning is going to be issued to Vito Rodriguez. And Rodriguez a little surprised as that was awarded to him. Murphy trying to get back up to his feet, does so. Broken down, tries to switch as they go out of bounds. A clasp is called against Rodriguez, so that'll be a point and potentially a big point at that for Jack Murphy. Now, should Jake Murphy net that reversal, he could tie it up. Whereas before, he needed a two move sequence now just one Rodriguez reattacking the far side leg has a tight waist trying to go through on a cross face Rodriguez trying to wrap up the cradle Murphy breaks it quickly and Rodriguez reattacking has to get a little higher on that up on the bicep to get the cross face you could hear Anea saying, hop to the other side. You got to attack from the right way. Look for that bar arm. Murphy not giving much, but Rodriguez looks up at the clock. He's got 10 seconds. He's got to hold on here to become a county champion. Murphy broken back down, trying to sit back out. A look up at the clock. Rodriguez will let him up, and time will elapse. Well, earlier this season, it was Jake Murphy, 3-2 over Vito Rodriguez. And in the county finals, Vito Rodriguez turns the tables and wins 3-2 over Jake Murphy to get us started in the county final, county championship finals as Vito Rodriguez is your 99-pound champion. A 3-2 decision for Locust Valley. That'll move us to 106 pounds. Another Seaford wrestler, Tom Lynch, at 13 and four on the season. Fourth place at 99 pounds last year against Joe Contrastano, 36 and five on the year. Second place in the county finals last year. Ranked number one in Nassau D2 out of Carl Place Wheatley. And it's Lynch attacking right away. Lowering the level, trying to go for that far single leg. Constratano in a tough spot. Ducks under, has behind position, but out of bounds they go, still on their feet. Another double leg attempt, bear hug by Lynch here. Pancaked, and Castrotano has the two-point takedown. Out of bounds, they go. 40 seconds elapsed in the first period.
Lynch tries to sit out and switch to start off. constrantano has got to be careful. He almost put himself on his back. Now he's got him stacked up. No back points awarded. Has the bar arm. And it works, and now he's trying to tilt him over. He's got to get that hip to hip. Work the leverage to his near side. Lynch trying to wrap him back up. Lynch in some trouble. He's got his back to the mat. And able to twist and turn out of it. He tried to grab Contrastano's head, and that made him incredibly vulnerable. Inside, 30 seconds to go in the opening period. 2-0 on the takedown by Contrastano. A stall warning against Tom Lynch of Seaford. Lynch back up to his feet. Constantino still has head control there. Tries to throw a half. Has got him to his back. But time runs out. Two back points awarded for Joe Contrastano. But for Tom Lynch, he's got to breathe a sigh of relief. Instead of a pin, he just escapes trailing 4-0 to the second period. Lynch winning both of his matches earlier today, as did Joe Contrastano to get to this point. Lynch turns, good re-attack by Contrastano. And Lynch frees himself, has the escape. Goes for that single leg, Contrastano sprawling out of it. Re-attacks the head. Sucked down by Lynch. You see the difference in styles as Contrastano likes to wrestle from his feet. Lynch likes to go a little lower, change the level. And it was Lynch who was the more aggressive in the first period. Just got a little too aggressive, a little too off balance on the bear hug attempts. And Contrastano was able to use his own momentum against him. Inside a minute to go in the second period, 4-1, Contrastano the number one ranked wrestler in Nassau D2 from Carl Place Wheatley on top, four to one, stalemate. And they'll reconfigure. Contrastano, big driving double attempt at the start of the whistle. Lynch sprawled nicely. He's got control of Contrastano's left leg. He's got to try and turn, though. He's got an overhook as well. Contrastano able to tech under, get around for two. 6-1 now, Contrastano on top. They'll ride out the final 10 seconds of the second period. Joe Contrastano, Contrastano, right where he wants to be, a five-point advantage. On bottom, a chance to escape. And make it so that Lynch needs a huge move to come back in this one. Lynch focusing on head pressure, has got the tight waist. Got that bowl and chain as well. Now he's got the half in deep, but Contrastano almost spun out of it. 30 seconds elapsed already in the third. And a warning on a stall for Contrastano. 
So each wrestler now with a boarding. Contristano's not picking up his head. He's got to try and work to his feet. Otherwise, he's going to get hit with that stole warning. That stole point with the warning already given. At the same time, Lynch has got to come out to the side and show that he's trying to work something. The longer you stay parallel, well, they give the stole. A point to Lynch for a stole. Now Contristano works back up to his feet, trying to face in. Lynch riding him. Thirty seconds left. And Contrastano looking the more tired of the two. Lynch continuing to work. Lynch has got the half. Contrastano cutting his hips the other way. Fifteen seconds. Another stall. Now six three. Over and out they go with eight seconds left. Contrastano, just body language by the time he gets there. He sprawled right on down. Face up, Contrastano pancakes him. Gets the reversal to his back. Two near fall. And the final will be 10-3 in favor of Joe Castrantano. So Joe Contrastano, who looked gassed that entire third period, Lynch gives him a little bit of life, and all of a sudden he pops up and throws him down. Closes out a county championship in proper fashion. Hundred and thirteen pounds, Christian Hansen. Out of Cold Spring Harbor, the hometown. And Oyster Bay's Keith Kasser. Kasser Jr. Hansen, just an eighth grader. And it was Hansen who was a county champion last year. Remember this powerhouse Cold Spring Harbor program. Both wrestlers actually county champions last year. And out of bounds. Official looked like he was getting ready to give two points. But out of bounds they go. In fact, Keith Kasser thought he had given up two as well. So two defending county champs going head to head. So Oyster Bay's Kasser, ranked number one. And Hanson, the eighth grader, ranked number two in the last Nassau County rankings. It looked like Hanson got either poked in the eye or potentially having a contact issue. Christian Hansen, 25 and 8 this season, 53 and 20 in two seasons as a varsity wrestler for Cold Spring Harbor. So back we go. Minute gone by. Both wrestlers still in sort of the feeling out stage. Neither has been able to generate much in terms of depth from a shot. There's a good deep single by Kasser. He's in high, Hansen riding up. Kasser trying to bring him down to the mat. Cuts over and Kasser has the takedown. Well controlled by the junior, Keith Kasser. He got Hansen up in the air and looked smooth and calm the entire time. 
waning seconds of the first period. And that'll do it. So one period in the books, and it's the Oyster Bay Junior on top. Hansen will start on bottom to begin the second period. We get a false start. So a caution to Kasser. So it looked like he was looking in for a half for a moment. Now goes cross face. Hansen hips into him, trying to sit out. Almost faces him. Cramby, and nothing there. Kasser is able to collapse right on top of him. Kasser right now going tight waist and that left forearm of Hansen. First thing Hansen's got to do, just work back up to his base. Try and free that hand. Kasser trying to work the tilt. Suck him in, he's got both hands on that wrist control. Trying to tilt him through again. Hansen's to his back. Near fall points being awarded. Kasser protects himself nicely to get back in control. They'll award three back points. And now a 5 nothing lead for Kasser of Oyster Bay here in the county finals at 113 pounds. Hansen trying to roll through one more time. Didn't work the first and doesn't work the second time here either. Hansen's got to be careful. Expose himself for the moment. Kasser now in peril. As Hansen, if he could stand up, he's got himself at least one. Time not on Hansen's side, though as the second period will come to an end. So already holding on to a 5-0 advantage, Keith Kasser will start on bottom, and that's going to be the second caution on Kasser. Got one in the last period on top. Getting a talking to from the referee. Press for the switch very quickly. Works up to his feet. Trying to peel circles and gets an escape. Out of bounds they go. But that is a big point. Because it needs more than just a takedown and three near fall points to tie it up. At this point now, Hansen is looking for a pin or one of those big combinations and he's got to continue to attack. Keith Kasser has just been so calculated and calm throughout the match. Very deliberate in so many of his moves. Very quick warning on Kasser. A circle back towards center. Now Kasser's got to be careful, though. The warning 
If he continues to back up, he's going to give up a point. And we talked about that one point is a huge difference. 104 left. Kasser in deep on a single leg. Now he's got the double. Kasser continuing to work. Hansen holding on right now, just hoping for a stalemate. Almost tries to roll him through. Kasser was there. He's in deep. Now he's got to attack that second leg, continue to drive forward. If he crawls up the back, he's got a takedown, and the two points have been awarded. Takedown for Kasser. Eight nothing lead for Keith Kasser. He gives a glance to the clock with 15 seconds remaining. As he looks towards his second consecutive Nassau County Championship. And they'll give a point to Hanson as the third caution against Kasser. One more for Hanson on escape. Waning seconds trying to finish it with a pin. He'll run out of time. But five more points. And 13-1 should be the final score. 13-2, pardon me. Keith Kasser, 13-2, victorious in the county championship. We'll be back in a moment from Cold Spring Harbor High School on News 12 Varsity. The love, yeah, it's in our souls. The passion, it's in the cheers. And in that pivotal moment, we live and die with every pass, block, steal, and game-winning dunk. And we wouldn't want it any other way. Don't miss a minute. Download the News 12 Varsity app today. Back at Cold Spring Harbor, we go to 120 pounds. It's Gage, Dean Natale at a Locust Valley. Ray Costa for Cold Spring Harbor. Dean Natale in the white singlet with the green and black trim. And Costa in the white singlet with the blue and red. Ray Costa 29 and 6 on the season. Dean Natale 23 and 10. Both these wrestlers have tasted some bitter sweetness as they've been close to a county championship, but have not been standing atop the podium in years past. Costa, county runner-up last year, third in the county in 2015. And Dina Talley, fourth in 2015, third a year ago. These guys met in the double in the dual meet earlier this year. Dina Talley in deep on a single, trying to attack to a double, sweeps it through, and they'll award him two points on a takedown. Out of bounds, they go uh, potentially dangerous, part of me. Well, that is Dean Natale's sort of hallmark. Is he's aggressive from his feet, but sometimes he could be too aggressive. Actually knocked out a kid at Eastern States, taking him down. And Joe Ania, his head coach, says if he's hitting his double legs, that's how we know he's on. He won 6-5 against Raymond Costa, the sophomore, earlier this year in the dual meet between the two programs. See Natalie throwing a bunch of fakes, trying to set up those double legs. 10 seconds to go in the period. Costa has a single leg sprawled out hard by Dean Natale. Tries to trip. Out of bounds they go as the first period comes to a close. 
Gage Di Natale, Locust Valley on top two to one. And it's gonna be Costa to have his pick to start the second. He deferred and Di Natale goes down. Di Natale to his feet quickly, slammed back down to the map by Costa, but Di Natale pops free and has an escape. So back to neutral. Cage Di Natale, Virginia Beach All-American in 2016, has to take down one more time. Opens up a 5-1 advantage. 30 seconds into the second period. Costa won his qualifier last week, as did Dina Talley. Costa's in deep here. Dina Talley trying to shake free. And he works out of that. Forty seconds to go in the second period. Three one, Dina Talley on top of Raymond Costa. He's playing a lot of hand games right now. Sets up Dina Talley so quick. Slams down Costa. And two points for Dina Talley, trying to force him all the way to his back. But Costa. Able to survive, get back to his base. Five nothing, Gage Di Natale, five one, pardon me. I have seven one on the scoreboard. I had it at five one initially. They had three one, so seven one is the score right now. So Di Natale in control. As we head to the third period. A six point advantage at seven to one. And he lets up Costa. Costa in deep trying to double up. If he pops behind, Di Natale's Holding on to that left ankle. Di Natale rolls him through, stay in the same spot. Di Natale has, has him on his back. Not quite. Boy, a tremendous sequence that results in zero. Both wrestlers rolling through with Costa knowing he needs points in this third. Costa cannot spare a lot of time here. He's got one minute, trailing by five, needs a big move. Sets it up, rolls all the way through, a big sprawl. Costa trying for the throw, Di Natale too strong on it. Now he's got double over the top, looking for a trip. Di Natale with the bear hug out of bounds, they tumble and we stay at neutral. Thirty-nine seconds left. Both wrestlers a little out of steam as we hit the home stretch. Go, 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 
Casa trying to throw in a hip. Dean Natale counters and has two. Out of bounds they go, and Dean Natale, who was in control, might have put the cherry on top of a county championship with that counter. And Tally will let him up. Costa on the escape. Just five seconds to go. Costa on a trip again, and Dina Tally smothers him. And Gage Dina Tally is your 2017 county champion at 120 pounds. Second Locust Valley County Champion, the first school to repeat this evening. And will they have one more? John Gomez taking the mat at 126 pounds against an eighth grader, Gavin Bell. Gomez, three-time county champion, three-time state place winner, a state champion. In 2015, 36 and one on the season. 129 career wins. He will wrestle at Princeton next year. And his head coach Joe Aeneas says he's just so special to watch. He's got these huge bursts where he just picks up point after point and a quick takedown by Gomez. Gomez trying to roll him through. Good bridge work by Bell. But Bell's got it. His shoulder's exposed, so they are counting. Out of bounds, two points for a near fall. And such a, a tough position for a young guy like Gavin Bell to be in. Gomez will let him up. Going up against a, a senior, a decorated wrestler. Gomez takes him down, lets him up again. And these are those bursts that Joe Inez talks about. He's got him turned. Bell to his back, Gomez trying to seal it. They'll give him three. So 11-2, now 11-3 is the lead with the escape. And you see Gomez has one thing on his mind, if he can't get the pin, that's just a tech fall. Right now he's got an eight point advantage. Has two more. Looks back to his coaches trying to weigh his options with 20 seconds to go in the first period. Gomez rolling him through again. No points awarded though. As Bell able to get back to his base. Gomez has Bell to his back one more time. Nothing, not, a, not long enough. And Gomez trying to get an eye for the time, looks up. And the first period comes to a close with John Gomez on top 13 to three. Oh, and someone like Gomez, this stage but a stepping stone to the greater goal. And that's to win his second state title. 2015 and then fell a little short of that goal last year. Still, play, still took all state. Gomez going back for that roll through. 
This time Bell was ready for it. Bell, not so much that time. Trying to bridge out of it. Able to turn back two more on a near full. Bell trying to do anything he can. Gomez readjusted for a second. Rolling him through one more time. Gomez has to be careful. And that should be it. That should be the tech fault. But John Gomez smooth and in control as he wins his fourth county title in four years for Locust Valley. So Tech fall at 318 for John Gomez. And the third Locust Valley champion. In 2017, as we move to 132 pounds, and they look for one more, Hunter Dusold. Actually, they'll have one more because it'll be Hunter Dusold, the senior out of Locust Valley, against Jack DiNatale, a junior out of Locust Valley. And it's always such a tough position to be in, facing your teammate with so much on the line for a county title. Dussold in the green anklets and Di Natale in the red anklets. Dussold, five-time county champ, three-time All-State. He's a state champion in ninth grade. Took second last year. Two high-level athletes. As Jack DiNatale also went to the Nationals in sailing for Locust Valley. Two points for Dussold on a takedown. And Joe Anea was saying they haven't wrestled as much in the room the last few weeks knowing that they are going to be facing each other in this county title. Dean Natale, a four-year varsity wrestler as a junior, who's an all-county, three-time all-county performer. Last match they wrestled, it was a close one. It was five to three in favor of Hunter Dussel. It was 29 and two on the season. And Dussel will wrestle at Columbia which if you get a look of him and Gomez in the Ivy League for the next couple of years, that should be fun. Dean Tally going real heavy on the head. He's got to suck him back in though, out of bounds, Dussold goes. Dussold throws him by. Sets him up. And a good counter by Dina Talley. Out of bounds they go. Now it shows you that the strength and the depth of the Locust Valley program. They have two guys vying for a county title here. Dussold in deep, brings down Di Natale hard to the mat. Two more points for Hunter Dussold. Oh, 4-1 lead after one. 
for the senior at 132 pounds. And it's only when you get these two, when you get two teammates going against each other that the gym will be this quiet. Because all the Locust Valley fans, they don't want to show any partiality. All the years that these two have gone head to head in practice, head to head in wrestle offs. You, know, you, you know the ins and outs of each other's style. Dussel trying to escape again. Dina Talley dragging him back in. Dussel quickly to his feet, sits in. Dina Talley. Wrapping up around Dussold's head, trying to earn the stalemate. Anchoring on to his left foot as well. Dussold, if he wants to do, he's got to try and shake his foot free. And we'll get a stalemate. And you see how well both these wrestlers know each other. Just in this second period, and Dussault might have got away with a quick start. Gets the escape, out of bounds they go. Tally gives a look to the scoreboard. 5-1, it shows Dussold on top with just over a minute to go in the second period. Both wrestlers feverishly throwing some hand checks, attacking each other. Tally hard, Dussel trying to drive forward. Out of bounds. Sold good quick single leg. Dina Talley sprawling out in a tough position though. Two points for Dussold. 7-1. Hunter Dussold now on top. I mean, if you look at the body language on both of them and their faces, it doesn't seem like either wrestler is enjoying this at the moment. Dussold re-attacking on a cross face. Dina Talley trying to throw something wild and recovered conservatively. Waning seconds of the second. A 7-1 lead for Hunter Dussold as we go to the third period. Oh, 
entire break before we started the third. Both coaches over to their respective bench. Dina Talley on the reversal. A shot out of the gates like a cannon to start the third. Tally returns him to the mat. And he's got to work from up top now. Dussault trying to roll through out of bounds. Hunter Dussault, 187 career varsity wins. Lots of stops and starts in this one. Dussold going sort of wide on the referee's position. And as he went down, Dean and Talley went on top of his knee, and that was point of contention to the referee. Dean Talley trying to reattack to Sold reverses him out of bounds. So 9-3 Hunter Dussold on top. 123 to go in the match. Let's up Dean Talley. Whistle and a point to do so. Dina Talley went a little heavy on that throw by on the club. Less than a minute to go. Hunter Dussold sets up the double leg, runs out of room. Dulso no with knows now with just 15 seconds left. He's pretty much got this put away. 10-4. And Hunter Dussold will win his sixth county title as a senior, and he'll move on and try and win a state championship for the second time. 10-4, your final score for Hunter Dussold at 132 pounds. We're back with the 138-pound bout in a moment.
on News 12 Varsity. Who will rise higher? Dunk harder. And go farther. The playoffs are here. Tune to News 12 Varsity all postseason long. At 138 pounds, pair of jacks. Jack Ward for Locust Valley, Jack Weibolt of Oyster Bay in the yellow singlet. And it's Ward, a four-time all-county performer. Both these wrestlers have placed second in years past. Ward got a second place finish in 2014 two-thirds in the last couple of years, and Jack Weibold's a second place finish last year. Jack's older brother Sam wrestles at Columbia. Decorated standout wrestler for these Locust Valley Falcons. And right now it's Ward, has that single leg, trying to suck it in. Attack to the double. No points awarded just yet, and now they give him. Two points on a takedown for Jack Ward. Ward took seventh place at the Eastern States this year, and that kind of gave him a little bit more confidence, showed him that he belonged in some of the top wrestlers in the region. A couple first place finishes this year, Ted Peterson tournament as well as the Gray Fitzgerald Tournament. And he's tying up Weibold. He's got to be careful, though. Weibold's got him down. And they stay in neutral. It was out of bounds. Oyster Bayside wanting a takedown for Weibold. Jack Ward attacks on a double, switches to a single. He's tried that single with the head. A couple times. Spinning Weibolt down, now reattacks, trying to wrap up a cradle. If he gets his head in the ribs, he would have him. He's got the half Nelson. Weibolt to his back, trying to roll all the way through. Ward trying to settle him back to the left. And you can hear from the Locust Valley side, circle back, circle back. Right now, no points being awarded. If he rolls his hips back towards his left, counter or clockwise, he would have had back points there. But he did have them. 7-1 after one period. Ward starting on bottom, clasp by Weibolt. So a free move basically for Ward. And Ward will face in, get the escape, get the point for the clasp as well. Nine one the advantage for Ward. Minute 38 to, to wrestle in the second period. Ward continuing to stay aggressive. Top ranked wrestler in Nassau County Division II at 138 pounds. Weibold throws the head. Good sprawl by Ward. Ward's got an underhook on one side. Looked like he was trying to wrap up a cradle for a moment. Both wrestlers scurry back to their feet. Ward and Weibold. Tied up in tight. Weibold trying to throw him by. 
He's got a chance. If he hips over, now he's given two. And Ward, who was such a spark plug earlier in this match, looking a little tired. 10 seconds left, he's trying to peel the hand out. Tried to circle back in, but ran out of room. Five seconds, Ward trying a switch. Time will run out on the second. Weibolt started down, but Ward will give up the point on the escape to begin the third. High crotch going down to a low single. Ward's working his way up. Weibolt's single leg trying to spin him down. Now comes up high, trips the far side legs, got Weibolt exposed for a moment, and then instead goes behind for two. 11 4 now, Jack Ward on top of Jack Weibolt out of Oyster Bay. Attacking again, he's not got much room on the perimeter over there. And Weibel kicking out, out of bounds. Tries to throw him in tough position, though. Ward went out. Jack Ward trying to win his 38th match on the season. And his first county title. Wrapping up a double. But Weibold's got underhooks, he's got Ward to his back. 15 seconds to try and put it away. Weibold turning the tables. Ward trying to hold on for dear life. Ward continuing to hit, four seconds to go. Weibold settling back. And Ward will avoid misery. Jack Weibold gave it everything he had. And in the end, it'll be Jack Ward, a one-point winner for a county title. Perhaps the most exciting ending we've had all night. To 145 pounds we go. Christian Tartaglia out of Cold Spring Harbor. Tyler Volpe of Seaford. Volpe 15 and 14 on the season. Second place in the qualifier. And Tartaglia, county champion last year. Third in 2015. The number one seed in the county. And Volpe, who was unseated, or unranked, I should say, 
coming into the tournament. Tartaglia, good, hard, aggressive single leg. That's two on a takedown. And Christian Tartaglia will go to work. Looking at some different colleges, Tartaglia potentially for wrestling, LIU, Hofstra locally, and Binghamton as well, upstate. Tartaglia's got that bar. Bringing it in, trying to work. Volpe to his back. He's working real heavy on that arm. Volpe trying to sit out, has an escape. Thirty seconds remaining in the first period. Tartaglia, a hard shot. Volpe sprawling. Both wrestlers work back towards center. Final 10 seconds. Tartaglia's got underhooks, but nothing else. And the horn will sound, 2-1. Tartaglia on top of Olpi. Volpe starting the second period down. Tartaglia re-attacking. Volpe to his back. Tartaglia has a half. He's in deep. Tartaglia trying to close the door. Volpe trying to swing through. He's got that left shoulder up. The referee trying to get back in better position. And Tartaglia will put it away. Back-to-back -back county championships for Christian Tartaglia. A pin for Christian Tartaglia at 232. And after a county title last year, he returns to the county finals and finishes a county championship in grand fashion. And now we have another county champion from 2016, Austin Carmen. Who won last year. Taking on Pat Briety out of Locust Valley. Austin Carmen from Clark in the maroon. And Briety from Locust Valley in the whites. These two wrestled in the qualifier last week. It was Austin Carmen winning 5-3. Briety, meanwhile, for Locust Valley, he was a county finalist as the seventh grader. Has not been back to the county finals since. Now a senior. And that needs to be active. And Carmen, multi-sport athlete, also an all-county football player for Clark in NASA Conference 4. Pat Briety is going to wrestle collegially at Gettysburg College. He's not placed first in a tournament yet this year. Pat Briety would love to change that today. Carmen, real good looking double leg takedown, but out of bounds. 152 pounds.
Cameron looking to change the level. Has a chance at it. Bryant, he sprawls out of bounds. I know it's not. This circle just feels so small. Wrestlers going out of bounds with a high frequency. A warning on Bryanty. Carmen in deep. Carmen will fall on top of Bryanty, trying to sprawl him out, but Bryanty's got that overhook on the left arm. Out of bounds they go, and Bryanty holds off a point. So good defense. Good defensive wrestling by the Locust Valley senior against Austin Carmen, the sophomore. Carmen throws up and under, nice double leg. Latching on to that single, but running out of time. Believe it or not, our first scoreless period that we have had tonight. Carmen starting down. Bryady trying to continue the Locust Valley winning ways. They have had five county champions. Six that have wrestled. One of those matches was Locust Valley against Locust Valley. Bryanty attacking the right elbow of Carmen. Has the tight waist, trying to break it back down, continuing to chop at it. Now he goes cross face to the left side. Tight waist and a cross face. He gives up the cross face. Well, he continues to break down the right arm of Carmen, but he's got to do something with it. He's got to use it. Carmen sitting out. Bryant, he's got to be careful. He's running a little high earlier. Now he's got that cross face in deep. Trying to cradle it up. He let go of it. So in the second period so far, Bryanty's had a fair amount of opportunities. He's given up on the opportunities pretty quickly though. He had the leg, he had the cross face on a cradle. Instead of continuing to try and drive the lower half towards the upper, he let go of both. Thirty-three seconds left in the second period. Scoreless matchup. Carmen out of bounds. Right here, reattack the left ankle of Carmen. And they go right back to it. Brian E returns him to the mat. Carmen eyeing that he's right there, trying to get out. Brian E trying to bring him back in. Unable to do so. 16 seconds left. Carmen trying a different tact this time. Same result. Lead to section 11, Matt. Carmen trying to turn in. Five seconds left. Carmen gets the escape. First point of the match with two seconds to go in the second.
And before the final horn sounded, Bryanty said, I want to be down. Knows he has to get that point back. Well, Carmen will let him up. So back where we started, now we're tied at one. Carmen and the coaching staff for Clark, Mike Leonard saying, you better get us a takedown. Bryde caught a shot in his right elbow, right eyebrow, pardon me. That was the reason for the whistle. So a minute 37 to go to determine a champion tied at one. Neither wrestler has been able to generate much in terms of a shot. Variety going heavy on the head. Here's Carmen backing up. Carmen aggressive, but too close to the out of bounds territory. The senior in Bryanty, the sophomore in Carmen, knotted up at one with a minute to go. The 152 pound county championship. And Bryanty dancing a little bit, trying to throw Carmen. Neither wrestler seems to be the one that wants to initiate and create. Carmen, aggressive, and a stalling point awarded to Carmen. I didn't see the warning that had been given, but Carmen goes on top two to one, and now Brian, he's got to work. Needs that point, Carmen up to two to one. Carmen will get in on the single leg again, has the takedown, and that should do it. Eight seconds to go, and Austin Carmen, who got a late escape to get the first point in the match, takes a 4-1 victory over Pat Friety. And he takes the 152 pound county title. Well, nine matches in the books. Plenty more to come. It's the Nassau County Division II Championships on News 12 Varsity. The love, yeah, it's in our souls. The passion, it's in the cheers. And in that pivotal moment, we live and die with every pass, block, steal, and game-winning dunk. And we wouldn't want it any other way. Don't miss a minute. Download the News 12 Varsity app today. Hundred and sixty pounds. Another Locust Valley representative, Bailey O'Brien, a junior and county champion last year in the green singlet. Erickson Velasquez, a freshman out of Mineola. At one hundred and sixty pounds, O'Brien working. The They reset. Bailey O'Brien has gradually increased his resume year by year. 2014, he took third place. 2015, second place in the county. And last year, it was a county championship. Velasquez trying to roll through in a grand beat. O'Brien looking to wrap up. But an escape as Velasquez gets to his feet. Hey, 
Velasquez spun back down to the mat on his back. O'Brien gives it up quickly as Velasquez fights back to his base. Ryan on top, four to one. Velasquez will get another escape. Velasquez on the shot. O'Brien sprawls to put pressure on his head. Ankle pick. Velasquez to his back. O'Brien's got him in trouble. 30 seconds, plenty of time remaining in the first period. O'Brien's got to continue to put pressure, but Velasquez is able to fight out of it. No back points awarded yet because O'Brien still has the move in. O'Brien sending it back to tilts. And the only way he gets any additional points here is if he pins him. 9-2 lead for O'Brien after the first period. Velasquez went to his back a couple times. Velasquez will start the second period on bottom. Trying to work the Gable series, O'Brien. Works to bar it. He's got a single bar. Trying to turn it. And they'll stop it on a potentially dangerous. Velasquez returned to the mat. 9-2, same score that we started the period with midway through the second. And we've had five Locust Valley County champions. Bailey O'Brien trying to become the sixth. Brian's going to come around. That forearm again. And Velasquez to his back one more time. 18 seconds. Velasquez turns it. O'Brien's on his back now. But O'Brien quickly gets back to his base. With seven seconds left, Velasquez trying to go for a home run. Out of bounds with 0.1 seconds. to work out the official scoring. Right now it says 11-2 on the board. So they gave Velasquez no change there. So 11-2 is the score going to the third period.
O'Brien wraps up the double leg. That's a 13 to two advantage. Trying to pull Velasquez back in, 108, remaining in the third. Five seconds left, O'Brien going over the top, looking for a cradle. Brings Velasquez down again. O'Brien will roll him through. Still working hard towards the end of this period. Just running out of time, otherwise O'Brien might have had a pin. But they gave him two more and 15-2 is the final score. As Bailey O'Brien goes back to back from a county title last year to a county title in 2017 and the sixth county champion for Locust Valley tonight. Up to 170 pounds now with Sean Mosca and Dante Bodie. Mosca, a senior from Carl Place Sweetly. Bodie, a senior out of Seaford. Mosca 31 and 2 on the season. It's like first in 2015, first in 2016. It was second in the state last year. Two points for Mosca. Plans to wrestle in the Big Ten at the University of Maryland. Anytime you're wrestling in one of those schools in the Midwest, Big Ten, Big 12, you are top notch, that's for sure. Three back points awarded to Mosca, who takes a 5 0 lead over Bodie. fifth at the Eastern States in 2016, was the Ted Peterson champion this year. Mosca going back to work. Tries to regrip and re-attack. Three more. Makes it an eight point advantage for Sean Mosca. He'll stop it on a potentially dangerous move. 34 seconds left in the first period. Got one bar arm. Oh, Bodie with an aggressive bridge. Three more back points. The first period will come to a close. 
And Sean Mosca on top, 11 to nothing. Thirty-one and two on the season. The one hundred and seventy pounder for Carl Place Wheatley. Mosca choosing down to begin the second period. Gets an escape. Mosca three points away from a technical fall. Make it one on a good double leg takedown. Mosca the 14 nothing advantage. He's got to turn him for two. And that should be enough. At 3.38, technical fall. So Mosca winning his third consecutive county title. This time at 170 pounds. We'll be back. No, not yet. Stand back. We move to 182 pounds. John DeRitter of Carl Place Wheatley, Chris Colvin of Oyster Bay. DeRitter also a member of the Carl Place Wheatley football team. Went to the county finals for the first time in quite a while. Took second place in the county last year, first in the 2013-2014 season. And a very quick, potentially dangerous given to Chris Colvin. Colvin in some trouble to Ritter. Trying to attack. Looked like he was getting ready to wrap up a cradle. De Ritter is gonna take down. And De Ritter looking for that overhead cradle again. Looks like he's almost got it wrapped. He's got to lean back with it. De Ritter's got to be careful, a little high, and he's got it wrapped. Colvin's on his back. De Ritter trying to finish it off on an overhead cradle, he does. 31 seconds in. John De Ritter winning his second county title via pin. So John DeRitter, 182 pound Nassau County champ. Three matches to go. We'll put a bow on it in a moment on News 12 Varsity. Who will rise higher? Dunk harder. And go farther. The playoffs are here. Tune to News 12 Varsity all postseason long. Under 95 pounds, Anthony Puffolino of Clark in the maroon singlet, Alex Cassisi of Locust Valley in the white and green. Clark won via pin last week. Second year wrestling a Locust Valley wrestler in the finals. Cassisi took second in the county last year. He's actually wrestling up. And when you see what John DeRitter did a moment ago, you can see why. And some blood time. But Cassisi took second place last year, as did Anthony Buffalino. Buffalino Uniondale champ this year as the Valley Stream South Tournament champion. 
and the Dan Wickman Classic champion as well. Buffalino on a takedown. Two nothing, Anthony Buffalino on top. After the takedown, Cassisi trying to sprint out, but nowhere to go. Buffalino trying to re-attack Cassisi. Cassisi again working for that escape point. Buffalino, and it's Cassisi with an escape. The waning seconds of the period. Cassisi trying to attack on a single. Three seconds to go, out of bounds is the call. With 1.9 left in the first. Last ranking at 195 pounds. Tarek Ibrahim was ranked first at 195, but he's actually bumping up to 220. Buffalino was second. And we go back to where we were much of the first period. Buffalino trying to re-attack. We're tied at two now after the escape from Cassisi. 20 seconds into the second period. Buffalino on a shot. Cassisi goes sprawling. <laughs> Buffalino out of bounds by the time Cassisi took that shot. And Mike Leonard, his head coach, screaming off the bench, saying, you got to circle, get back in. Buffalino quickly does. Cassisi going on the ankle. If Buffalino pops his head out, he's got two and he does. 
4-2, Buffalino leads. Buffalino re-attacking with 25 seconds left as Cassisi. There's two points in the matchup, both from escapes, trying to get it one more time. Cece facing up. Buffalino has got him close. Almost turned him. Working on a power arm. Second period is in the books with Buffalino of Clark on top of Cassisi of Locust Valley. 4 to 2 in the 195 pound Nassau County T2 Championship. Now the senior Anthony Buffalino of Clark will start the third period on bottom. Buffalino broken down, Cassisi trying to work to bring him back in. Buffalino looking a little more tired of the two. Remember last time these two wrestled a week ago, it was a pin for Buffalino. So he didn't have to go the full distance. He sits out, because GC has got the wrist control. trying to sit out. Cassisi is there chopping the forearm. Now bring the near side in, trying to return him to the mat, does so. He's got to start getting points though. A little over a minute to go in the third, trailing four to two. Good hard switch by Buffalino. 6-2, the Clark senior takes the lead. Buffalino on a butt drag, gets up way high on that angle of the shoulder. Buffalino looking to stack up Cassisi. 
has an underhook, and Cassisi will give, be given a point for an escape. Anthony Buffalino, who has two third place finishes in the county and a second place finish last year. Looking for his first county title as a senior. Stall warning, and now a point given to Cassisi. Big point, all Cassisi needs is a quick takedown to tie it. He's only got seven and a half seconds left. He's got to move right away. And Buffalino backing up, won't matter. As Buffalino wins the county title at 195 at 6'4". Al Movis to 220 pounds. Two Clark wrestlers will be going head to head. A senior in Tarek Ibrahim and a freshman in Osmond Boyer. Quick shot and a sprawl. And are the two points awarded? Yes, they are. Ibrahim on top, 2 nothing. Ibrahim third place in the Nassau County Championship last year, Uniondale tournament champion. You mentioned he was ranked first at 195 pounds. Decided to bump up to 220. That'll be three back points. Five nothing lead for Ibrahim. He's got a double bar arm on his teammate Boyer. Not in too deep, but he's got some time to work with it. 23 seconds left. Trying to put Boyer to his back. Thirteen seconds. He's keep trying to drive. He's got Boyer just about stacked up. Eight seconds left in the period. Boyer trying to wait this one out. Not get pinned. Two seconds. One second, and Boyer will, at least for the moment, avoid the fall. But Abraham takes an eight-nothing lead to the second period. Thirty-two and five, 
record on the year for Ibrahim. 22-5 record for Osman Boyer. First year varsity wrestler in wrestling in the county finals. Against somebody who you would say has been a mentor to wrestling in the room all the time. Ibrahim faking a shot. Boyer spinning out of it. Midway through the second, we get a stall warning on Boyer. Ibrahim's got the high single, working on a trip, brings it back in. Give two there. Eleven nothing, Ibrahim leading with just fifteen seconds left. Final seconds of the second period. Ibrahim <laughs> starting up top, and he's on top 11 0 in this third period. Looking for his first county title. Took third last year in the tournament. Throws a leg in. That looks like he's looking for an overhead cradle. Circles on back. Five seconds, Ibrahim plows through. Boyer's on his back. Two more back points. Ten seconds to go. An escape point for Boyer. And Ibrahim just waiting this one out as he will rebound from a third place performance last year and a 13 to one victory in the Nassau County Finals. He'll move on to the state tournament. And now 
the final weight class at 285 pounds. Oyster Bay's Sam Conaparist and Joseph Libretti of Cold Spring Harbor. Libretti took third last year as a freshman. Conaparist, this is his first year on the varsity. Qualifying tournament champion, as was Libretti. Kind of Paris spent much of the year ranked number one at 220 pounds in Suffolk Division II. He's got a single. He's trying to bring Libretti back in. Sucking him back, throws a trip. Got behind him, but never had control. Howard Paris trying to bring him back down. Good footwork by Libretti to avoid it. Midway through the first, still scoreless. Joe Labretti working for that hand control. Kind of Paris has the overhook and an underhook working. Labretti tries to throw him, but it's out of bounds. 34 seconds left in the first period. goes for the shot, Libretti trying to work around. Car Paris has the underhook, trying to trip him up. Looks for the throw and they disengage out of bounds. I'll just let time run out. Choice to Kona Paris. He takes down to begin the second. Junior on top. Kona Paris returned to the mat quickly. Libretti's got his leg laced. Ready at the half for a moment. Kara Paris trying to circle, but he goes out of bounds. Paris sprawling out wide, trying to maintain his base. Gives a look at the score or time remaining in the period. Still a good chunk left, just under a minute. Car Paris to his back, but out of bounds. Based on the look up at the clock, Kona Paris getting a little fatigued. Libretti 
has wrist control on both sides. Working him up. Getting an ankle. Clona Paris shutting it down though. He's gotta pick his head up, otherwise he's gonna get a warning. You can see the body language on the referee saying you gotta do something. Paris up to his foot for the moment. Libretti bringing him back down. <laughs> Period coming to a close. Still scoreless. And Libretti with a huge choice here. Well, it was kind of Paris' choice. He elected to let Libretti up. With a bold move, giving the go-ahead point to start the third. After that decision, Conor Paris has to get a takedown here in order to make that worthwhile. And a stall warning on Libretti. And the Cold Spring Arbor staff did not like it at all. Paris coming up high, Libretti ducking under. Conan Paris working for that arm control. He's got less than a minute. One point the difference, Libretti on top because of an optional escape to start the third. I'm saying Conan Paris just does not have a lot of energy left. Libretti forcing him down, spins behind, takes him down, and gets him back up. And from the Cold Spring Harbor side, the coaches are saying, why did you just let him back up? Why give him the point and the chance to tie it? Twenty-five seconds left, three to one. Labretti on top. Labretti snaps him down. Kona Paris trying to drive. Labretti backing up. Last match of the night. Some of the home fans on their feet trying to see a county champion in Labretti. Labretti spinning back behind. A five-one lead now. Joe Libretti eyeing up to the clock, lights up his opponents, but time will run out. Five, two, decision for Joe Libretti at 285 pounds for Cold Spring Harbor. So 15 matches, 15 champions crowned, in Nassau County Division Two, We'll be back to wrap this thing up for Cold Spring Harbor in a moment. Watch Nassau County D2 Finals on News 12 Varsity. The love, yeah, it's in our souls. The passion, it's in the cheers. And in that pivotal moment, we live and die with every pass, block, steal, and game-winning dunk. And we wouldn't want it any other way. Don't miss a minute. 
Download the News 12 Varsity app today. Welcome back to Cold Spring Harbor, 182-pound champ in Nassau County. John DeRitter from Carl Place Wheatley, and a pin in 32 seconds. And John, first, tell me what your your mindset was going into that, and what you saw that allowed the pin to develop. I had a pretty good mindset early in the year when we wrestled. He said some disgusting words that shouldn't have really been said. Had a pretty good motivation to go into the match. I saw him wrestle early in the day, and I knew what was there, what was going to be there, and I just took what I had. A county title as an eighth grader, now a junior, you, you win your second title. What's the difference now for you, a couple years older and now a, a little bit heavier as well? It's a lot different. I mean, like, just my whole style of wrestling's changed a lot. Like, everything, every, all the moves I used to do, I don't really hit anymore, but I still hit some of them. Like, just completely different, uh, like, style of wrestling. And for you, obviously, the, the successful fall season for football, first time in a while for Carplay Sweetly. How much personally did, did that momentum kind of carry into this wrestling season? Gave me a pretty good mentality going into it, knowing that I did pretty well in the football season, got all county, and then coming into this, I knew I just had to do what I had to do, and I'd get all county, and I'd get it done at the end of the year. And having been to the state tournament uh, as an eighth grader, what do you expect going upstate now uh, after this county title? I expect a bunch of good wrestlers up there. I mean, work hard for the next two weeks at state practices, wrestling the best guys in Nassau County, and see what I can do from there. I appreciate it. Congratulations. Thank you. Some tremendous wrestling today from Cold Spring Harbor, 15. County champions crowned at the Division II level of Nassau County. Congratulations to all the winners, and they now move upstate to the New York State Tournament. That'll do it for everybody involved in our broadcast. For our producer, Tom Schnars, I'm Matt Shortis saying so long. We'll catch you next time on News 12 Varsity.